AI agents are all the rage, and Google's new one can play video games. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. The AI agent future is coming on quickly, and Google DeepMind has made another advancement in that area. Yesterday they tweeted, Introducing Seema, the first generalist AI agent to follow natural language instructions in a broad range of 3D virtual environments and video games. It can complete tasks similar to a human and outperforms an agent trained in just one setting. We partnered with gaming studios to train Seema, which stands for Scalable Instructable Multi-World Agent, on No Man's Sky, Teardown, Valheim, and others. These offer a wide range of distinct skills for it to learn, from flying a spaceship to crafting a helmet. Seema needs only the images provided by the 3D environment and natural language instructions given by the user. With mouse and keyboard outputs, it is evaluated across 600 skills, spanning areas like navigation and object interaction, such as turn left or chop down tree. We found SEMA agents trained on all of our domains significantly outperform those trained on just one world. When it faced an unseen environment, it performed nearly as well as the specialized agent, highlighting its ability to generalize to new spaces. Unlike our previous work, SEMA isn't about achieving high game scores. It's about developing embodied AI agents that can translate abstract language into useful actions, and using video games as sandboxes offers a safe, accessible way of testing them. The SEMA research builds towards more general AI that can understand and safely carry out instructions in both virtual and physical settings. Such generalizable systems will make AI-powered technology more helpful and intuitive. So basically what you have here is an attempt to train a generalist AI agent and see how it compares in the context of these virtual worlds in the form of games to agents that are trained just specifically on one game. The broader goal of the research, as Google said, is about generalist agents that can navigate any virtual or physical world environment, not just those of video games. The Google DeepMind blog post has a lot more about how the process worked. For example, they write, We used four research environments, including a new environment we built with Unity called the Construction Lab, where agents need to build sculptures from building blocks which test their object manipulation and intuitive understanding of the physical world. By learning from different gaming worlds, SEMA captures how language ties in with gameplay behavior. Our first approach was to record pairs of human players across the games in our portfolio, with one player watching and instructing the other. We also had players play freely, then rewatch what they did and record instructions that would have led to their game actions. I think the big upshot and what Google DeepMind is excited about comes from the fact that, as they write, we show an agent trained on many games was better than an agent that learned how to play just one. In our evaluation, SEMA agents trained on a set of nine 3D games from our portfolio significantly outperformed all specialized agents trained solely on each individual one. What's more, an agent trained in all but one game performed nearly as well on that unseen game as an agent trained specifically on it on average. Importantly, this ability to function in brand new environments highlights SEMA's ability to generalize beyond its training. Google DeepMind has long been a fan of using these sort of gaming environments to figure out advances in AI, and this seems to be no exception. Next up on The Brief, what is looking sort of like a fairly disastrous interview by OpenAI CTO Mira Marathi with The Wall Street Journal. The piece was called, OpenAI Made AI Videos for Us. These clips are good enough to freak us out. Now, the article as written isn't damning. In fact, it's part of the coverage of Sora that reflects just how much people are blown away by it. As they wrote, when OpenAI began previewing videos made with the generative AI tool last month, the internet understandably lost its mind. Other AI video technology has produced choppy, low-resolution clips. These looked like something out of a nature documentary or big-budget film. Sora brings new intensity to the now-familiar AI feelings loop, amazement about the capability followed by fear for society. And if you just read the WSJ piece, you'd probably come away pretty impressed and fairly thoughtful. However, if you actually watch the interview, particularly the question where the interviewer asks what data Sora was trained on, and specifically if it was trained on data from YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, you would have a very different impression. The Verge writes, when pressed on what data OpenAI used to train Sora, Marathi didn't get too specific and seemed to dodge the question. Quote, I'm not going to go into the details of the data that was used, but it was publicly available or licensed data. Marathi also said she isn't sure whether it uses videos from YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. Ed Newton Rex, the CEO of Fairly Trained, and the person who left Stability AI over their copyright policies, writes, Disappointing to see OpenAI CTO dodge questions about Sora's training data today. If a Gen AI company dodges questions about their training data and uses the phrase publicly available, it seems fair to assume their model was trained on copyrighted work without permission. Even if one doesn't agree with that, I think a lot of people are stunned that she wasn't prepared for this question, that she didn't assume that this is going to be a question asked in basically every interview from here to forever. Given the fact that OpenAI is fighting multiple lawsuits on multiple fronts around copyrighted data, of course they're going to ask this question. You would have thought that everyone from the PR team to the executive team to the legal counsel would have figured out exactly what they were going to say to this answer long before the interview ever took place. Interestingly, given that we talked about the EU AI Act recently, Louisa Jarofsky points out that this is potentially more than just a PR problem. 
Louisa writes, the clip below could put OpenAI in trouble. Here's why. In case OpenAI's Sora is classified as a high-risk AI system per the EU AI Act, they will have to comply with transparency obligations such as informing users about training, validation, and testing data sets used. In the clip below, Mira Marathi, OpenAI's CTO, cannot specify or exemplify the sources of data used to train Sora. If she were from the marketing department, this would be okay, but as a CTO, this is a core aspect of the technology that can lead to legal liability, and she should be able to answer it in a straightforward way. Still, I think while this might be the conversation inside of our enfranchised AI community, by and large, still what people are paying attention to when it comes to Sora are its incredible outputs. Lastly today, another update around election-related policies for AI. Midjourney has changed its policies and is now blocking images of Biden and Trump as the U.S. election comes into focus. This was announced during an office hours event yesterday, where Midjourney CEO David Holtz said that the company was starting to block requests for images of the two candidates, which is a reversal of a decision that they had made back in February. When the Associate Press tried Trump and Biden shaking hands at the beach, they got a banned prompt detected warning, and after a second attempt got an abuse alert warning. Petapixel tried to get around it by saying the 45th president of the United States with the 46th president of the United States holding hands, but also got the banned prompt message said Holtz during the office hours, I don't really care much about political speech. That's not the purpose of Midjourney. It's not that interesting to me. That said, I also don't want to spend all my time trying to police political speech, so we're going to have to put our foot down on it a bit. Sounds to me like this is less about taking some deep principled stance and more about just not being distracted by what is going to be a very distracting conversation. Expect to see more of this type of decision happen as we get closer to November. For now, however, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Up next, the main AI Breakdown.